Vegetarian food in the USA has a reputation for not only lacking meat, but lacking flavor. It's the worst. But today, we're exploring insane levels of veggie flavor right here in Mumbai, India. In this video, our mission is to seek out and document five of Mumbai's most mind-blowing non-meat snacks. By the end of this video, we'll find out if Mumbai can shatter the stereotype and prove that plant-based eating can actually be a knockout for your taste buds. Our food adventure begins at a spot that's like a mad scientist's lab, a place crafting greasy wonders from tapioca balls. You know, the same ones you find in bubble tea, but here they're mixed and mashed with potatoes. This creation is fried into crispy perfection, and Mumbai locals love it. In Mumbai, you will find plenty of other vegetarian restaurants. Now, there is a trend that people prefer veg food more than non-veg food since it is healthier, so there is a slight increase in customers over the years. Say hello to Sabunada Vada. Vada is the all-encompassing term for Indian snacks, covering everything from fritters to cutlets and dumplings. To make this dish, begin by loading up a plate of tapioca pearls, which ordinarily are pretty bland on their own. But these little bulbous dudes are the unsung heroes of texture. Toss in potatoes, peanuts, and a dash of tapioca flour, all for that coveted bounce factor. Spice things up with chopped green chilies, salt, and a hint of sugar for that flavor burst. Blend this magical mix, shape it into tiny balls, and let them take a dip in a hot oil jacuzzi. Once the shell achieves the pinnacle of crispiness, pair it with a creamy curd dip. It's not quite like bubble tea. These tapioca balls pop in your mouth, releasing a mix of sweet, savory, and a hint of chili heat. It's sure to make you go back for seconds, thirds, or you know what? Who's counting? It's vegetarian. That means it has to be healthy. Going vegetarian in the Western world makes you think you'll need an Elon Musk level of wealth just to afford a decent meal. But in India, they've mastered the art of flavor without eventually having to file for bankruptcy. Enter level two in our flavor escapade, Junka Bakar, proving you can have opulent taste explosions without a billionaire's paycheck. Many people have come to Mumbai from different places and different cities. You will find a wide variety of food and spices from different cultures and communities here. The taste of Zunka Bakar is inspired by that, and it is a mix of spices from each community. Let's tackle the junka, a Maharashtrian porridge made from gram flour. Heat oil in a wok and add mustard seeds, cumin, and smash garlic. Toss in curry leaves, green chili, and red onions. Then add turmeric, red chili powder, salt, gram flour, and garam masala, mixing until it's dry. Pour in water and continue mixing until you achieve a porridge-like consistency. Finish it off with a sprinkle of fresh coriander. In another pan, we prepare our flavor agent, also known as ticha. Add oil, cumin, green chili, peanuts, and garlic cloves, then cook for about three minutes. Transfer the mixture into a mortar, smash, and biggity boom. Your spicy condiment is ready to shine. Lastly, let's not forget about bakri, a North Indian flatbread. Mix sorghum, flour, and salt with water. Knead the dough and roll it into small balls. Press these into flat disks and grill them on a hot tawa on both sides. A round of applause for the Junka Bakar. This dish went from humble peasant origins in rural areas to stealing the spotlight at weddings and Hindu festivals. It's kind of like the Cinderella story of vegetarian food. To devour it the proper way, think of it like crafting your own edible masterpiece. Grab that Bakar bread, fashion it into mini tacos or wraps, generously stuff it with the hearty chickpea porridge, and of course, don't forget to sprinkle in just the right amount of tea cha to season it. Hold on to your salad forks, because we're about to tackle the world of super rice, a dish so nutritious it makes your attempts at a balanced diet look like a failed science experiment. Let's just say it's packed with more fiber and more energy-rich carbs than your average menu item, and it gets bonus points for having fewer calories. This, my friends, is Poha. Our poa is into the Maharashtrian type. It's onion and garnish with the coconut on that. It is our grandma recipe. The spices and everything, it's authentic. So the taste is totally different from any other missile. I think it's a light breakfast. 
to make it, start by giving flattened rice a good wash and soak to unleash its nutritional superpowers that soak up like a flavor sponge. In a walk, kick off the flavor fiesta with mustard seeds, cumin seeds, curry leaves, red onions, and diced tomatoes. Then introduce green peas, boiled potatoes, and peanuts to the party. Time for the seasoning magic. Turmeric powder, salt, and a zesty squeeze of lime. Sprinkle in the flattened rice, give it a good mix, and crown it with fresh chopped coriander and grated coconuts for the final touch. This is a meal that even a bodybuilder would secretly drool over. It's a nutritional powerhouse, giving you all the gains without the guilt of unnecessary calories. The rice has a bit of nuttiness, and the lime adds a zing that's more surprising than accidentally biting into a chili. We're almost at our final level of flavor on our veggie tour. But before that, how about a tea break? Our next dish is the perfect pairing with some hot chai. But here's the thing, it's not a dessert or a sugary treat. Instead, it's a coriander-packed creation that has tea lovers in India in a chokehold. So say farewell to the usual sugary suspects and get ready for a savory twist. Meet Koti Mibir Wadi in a pan, add a splash of oil, then cue in the spice ensemble. Mustard seeds, cumin, red chili powder, turmeric powder, ginger garlic paste, and a hearty dose of chopped coriander leaves. Toss in a few scoops of gram flour, stirring until it morphs into a delectable paste. Spread this concoction evenly on the tray, allowing it to cool. Once it reaches the perfect temperature, cut it into uniform squares and take it on a deep fry plunge until a satisfyingly crispy crust emerges. Don't be deceived by their appearance. These squares of delight may resemble your favorite fudgy brownies, but the taste and texture tell a different story. Instead of a sweet treat, you'll experience a crispy, savory cake bursting with aromatic spices and a final kick of coriander that'll leave your taste buds applauding. For our grand finale, we're unveiling the secrets surrounding Mumbai's most sought-after veggie treat. This humble cracker, no, I'm not talking about myself, has the whole city queuing up like a theme park ride, and we're diving in to uncover why it's so dang addictive. I started making kichia papad at the age of 15. I stayed with the Marwadi family for one month and learned the process of making kichia papad. I make this papad at home. It is made with flour. After that, it is dried for two days. Bow down to the great kichia papad. To make this dish, begin by roasting a cracker made from black gram bean flour over the coal. As the flames work their magic, watch its texture transform from stone hard all the way to a crispy delight, ready to soak up all those flavors. Give it the royal treatment with a brush of melted butter and a sprinkle of chili powder for that extra kick. Now prepare for the grand topping ceremony. Chop cucumbers, tomatoes, red onions, and a dash of chopped masala. Follow that with red chutney, green chutney, and sev. Crown it all with fresh coriander leaves, chopped carrots, roasted chana dal, a squeeze of lemon, and a final dash of chopped masala. This dish is proof that you don't need fancy ingredients to turn a simple snack into a food sensation. At least not in Mumbai. Here it's all about the balance of flavors and textures. The center of the cracker soaks up the delicious butter and chutneys, while the outside stays nice and crispy. The sev and chana dal provide another type of crunch, while the veggies add a hint of freshness. Well, folks, we've successfully survived another day without turning into carnivores. The journey was just so delightful that I almost started considering myself a plant-based superhero. You know, like the Veggie Avenger or Eggplant Man. But now we do have one burning question. Which non-meat snack was your absolute favorite? Was it the bouncy Sababa Navada, the traditional Chanka Batar, the nutrient-packed Poha, the elusive Koting Birwadi, or the surprising twist of Kichi Yapapad? <laughs> For me, the crown absolutely goes to Poha. I'm always on the lookout for superfoods to channel my inner Brad Pitt figure, and this dish ticked all the right boxes, flavors, nutrients, and a low calorie count. But which one would you choose for your next Beatless Monday? Let us know downstairs in the comments below. And for more indulgent feasts for your senses, be sure to subscribe to Best Ever Food India. Thanks, bye! 
Elevate your style with our brand new clothing collection. Rock out in our threads, feel the thrill of culinary adventures, and celebrate with us in style. Head on over to beffers.shop today.